In this interview, I speak with Dr. Richard Sutton, who's the Chief Scientific Advisor of the Alberta Machine Intelligent Institute, or AMI. He is a world-leading expert in AI, specifically in reinforcement learning. And we discussed how he sees Alberta as a leader in machine learning and artificial intelligence, why he chose to settle in Alberta, even though he could live anywhere in the world. And also he shares how his wife explains how reinforcement learning works. And uh, sounds quite simple. Enjoy. Hi, I'm Rich Sutton. I'm a professor of computing science at the University of Alberta. I'm the um, chief scientific advisor at the Alberta Machine Intelligence Institute, or AMI. And I'm also a scientist at uh, DeepMind Alberta. Well, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sutton, for joining us today. It's really an honor to be speaking with you. Um, I'd like to start by just uh, asking you to introduce yourself and uh, describe the work you do. Well, I'm a professor, and but most of all, I'm a scientist, and uh, I study machine learning. I study a particular kind of machine learning called reinforcement learning. The heart of it really is to understand how the mind works, how we can recreate the mind's abilities in computers. And I work every day at the university, at the Alberta Machine Intelligence Institute, and in a satellite laboratory of DeepMind in Edmonton. Just for our audience that might not be aware, in layman's terms, could you just expand a bit on what machine learning or reinforcement learning is? To understand what artificial intelligence is, the best way is to think about people and the capabilities of people. People uh, interact with the world, they perceive the state of the world, they model the world, they understand it, and they make decisions. They choose actions uh, that influence things. And we're trying to recreate those abilities in, com in computers, in, in machines. Um, now, there, there are several kinds of machine learning. The most well-known kind is supervised learning, where you just learn from examples. It's, it's really a lot like pattern recognition. But my own specialty is reinforcement learning. In reinforcement learning, we're interested in agents that, that have a life, that, that make a sequence of decisions and experience a sequence of observations from the world. So it's a more naturalistic, it's really modeled after animals. How does an animal learn by trying things and obtaining reward or, or being punished? Uh, punishment and rewards are not things that come from people or from teacher, they come from the world. If you're an animal and you're, tr and you're trying to live your life, then you may be rewarded by finding food and, and uh, punished by, by pains and failing. My wife likes to simplify reinforcement learning to, if it feels good, do it. <laughs> and that's pretty much <laughs> what the idea is. You, if it feels good, you do it and you remember it so you can do the same thing again next time. And that's a really powerful principle. Trying to explore that power and seeing how it applies to the real world. Um, what research in artificial intelligence, machine learning and reinforcement learning uh, are you most excited about? And which areas of research do you think are going to have the biggest impact on the future of the Canadian and global economies? Well, the key thing is that we want, I want, um, learning systems, intelligent systems that learn on their own so they can learn from the normal, their normal interaction with the world um, rather than from prepared data. Right now, the most, the greatest impacts of machine learning on uh, economic matters comes from uh, learning from training sets where all the desired behavior is provided by people having prepared, uh, la carefully labeled training sets. And, and that, that, that is great and it's really, it's been powerful, uh, but the really exciting steps will, will come when the machine can learn on its own. Um, so for example, uh, if it's making decisions about how to place things on the, on the internet uh, to, to, to appeal to users, uh, you, you, could be, you could learn from uh, placing things on the internet and then, and then seeing if people react to them or, or ignore them. AI is like automated decision making. So every place you have decisions that are being made and ideally they be made lots of them over and over again and there's, there's data and there's time to pick out the patterns, you would like to uh, be able to use AI. So, you know, the web, there's obviously lots of decisions being made about what to show to people. 
Uh, but just all the time, you know, an elevator might have to decide where to wait, most likely to pick up new, new people. If you're a, a financial trading system, you have millions of decisions to be made. If you're a company and you have a logistics chain and you have to decide when to order things and when to ship things to new, new levels, when to start productions, uh, those are all decisions that are made over and over again. And there's data about the success and failure. And as we automate all that, um, that kind of decision, if we can automate that kind of decision making to the extent that we can do that and to the extent that we can do it well, uh, it's just enormously economically powerful. Getting to Alberta, um, you're, you're based in Edmonton. Uh, I'd like to hear from you how you describe Alberta's strengths uh, in artificial intelligence, in machine learning, uh, and what you see on the horizon in Alberta in this field. Uh, and also as a follow on, where you place uh, Amy uh, the, your institute within that ecosystem and the role it plays? The first thing is I think all of us Albertans should be excited about artificial intelligence um, because it's, it's happening roughly now in the next few decades. And it's also happening now in terms of immediate applications. And it's happening here in Alberta. Alberta has a concentration, uh, perhaps the largest concentration of scientists working in the reinforcement learning approach to, to machine learning, but generally in artificial intelligence at the university and at AMI, the University of Alberta and the Alberta Machine Intelligence Institute, um, we have a real uh, world leading group, uh, maybe uh, 30 professors in AI and uh, uh, 10 or so in uh, reinforcement learning. And so it, we've had this focus for a long time. And uh, uh, it's, it's really s starting to um, be obvious to the rest of the world that we're punching above our weight. And um, so I, I think we should also be excited about the thing that's happening now in Alberta. Uh, we have a, a, a leading position in it, and um, it's going to be have a more and more impact on, on what we do in our economy. You could work anywhere in the world, uh, but you became a Canadian citizen in 2015. Uh, so why Alberta? Why Canada? Uh, what, what was the appeal and why did you decide to... Uh, focus your energies within that innovation ecosystem, particularly. It's a little bit hard to say how it's how it's come about. Um, the 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 University of Alberta was always a leader in AI, and I was drawn to that. Uh, but now we're just like the largest, the most impactful group in this in my subspecialty, which is in reinforcement learning. We have. Uh, we have uh, now 10 principal investigators in our reinforcement learning and AI lab. And, uh, you know, I often think, you know, maybe I should go someplace else, but I can't really think of any place that would be as exciting to work at than, than here. I want to say a little bit more is that Alberta is kind of, it's strangely sticky. Uh, people who come here, we, we like it. I mean, it's a, it's a cold place. We should be annoyed, but, <laughs> but we, we, we do like it. Maybe it's a good place to raise your kids or maybe it's just because people are friendly. I think people are really friendly. Um, and Alberta has kind of, kind of the friendliness of the middle of the country. And yet it has the, the excitement of, uh, of, of, the, of the coast because we still have lots of immigration and different kinds of people. Uh, so we're very tolerant, open, accepting place to do uh, good work. So I don't want to go anyplace else. We could go on for quite a lot longer, I'm sure. Uh, but I'd just like to uh, give you 30 seconds more. Uh, and in that 30 seconds, I'd like, if you can, to pitch someone or a group of people uh, that you have, that you think have the power to make Canada a global leader in artificial intelligence. Um, who would you pitch, individual or group, and what would you urge them to do now to to make Canada a competitive force 
or a leading force within the world of AI? Well, Tim, I'm a big believer in the power of individuals. And I think really it's our individual decisions that make the difference rather than what uh, government tells us to do um, or tries to influence us to do. And, and so in particular in AI, uh, for both the scientific aspect and the uh, entrepreneurial aspect, the economic aspect, I think it, it's, it's, it's really in the hands of our people. And I would just urge people to see what, what can you do? What company could you start? Uh, what journey could you begin of, of learning about the science and then contributing to what is known about how our, our minds work?